Today on Anxiety at Work, we discuss how the pandemic put unique stresses on women that don't seem to be going away. I'm Chess Relton, and with me is my dear friend and co-author, Adrian Costa. Well, thank you, Chess. Yeah, as women navigate <laughs> returning to work or want to move upward in their current positions, well, they need resources to make the greatest game plan for success. That's what our discussion today is going to be all about. And our guest today is our new friend, Shauna Hawking. Shauna is a leadership consultant, philanthropic advisor, and author of the new book, one Bold Move a Day, and Shauna's book is available in bookstores today. It's by McGraw-Hill, and it draws from over 20 years of experience working with teams within institutions such as the Wharton School, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and Duke University. She explains how women can best support each other and themselves in leadership roles. Shauna, welcome. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Chester. Thank you, Adrian. Well, we're delighted to have you on. So give us first off the main message for readers in One Bold Move a Day. Uh, the main message in One Bold Move a Day is that a single measurable act each day has the power to change the trajectory of your career, leadership, and personal life. Wow, that's, that's, consul- that's very really concise. succinct. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's the elevator pitch. Okay, so so let's let's push you on this. Okay, so especially for you're on this anxiety at work podcast. I, I you know people with anxiety we love to be in our ruts, right? You don't want to get out. So how do I make one bull to move today when I have no desire maybe to do that? Why would I want to? And what's the benefit for me? So when I think about this in the context of having anxiety at work or in life. Uh, One Bold Move a Day is a way to help calm the stressors that we feel in the external world because it gives us a clear pathway and purpose. And all we're saying is to do one of these bold moves a day. And it's attainable even when things feel uncertain, unsure, or you feel like you're not feeling motivated because a bold move is defined by you and it changes and evolves each day and over time. So today, our bold move is having a conversation that we believe will help other people. But tomorrow, our bold move may be negotiating a six or seven figure contract or reaching out to a friend we haven't talked to in a long time. And I I think that's the way that everybody feels like they can be a part of this strategy. Hey, Shannon, before we go on, we're going to break here. Um, I'm hearing some clicking. Uh, you might need to have a drink or something. I'm hearing some sure. kind of clicking with, with as you talk, kind of yeah, moisten your mouth and stuff. So sorry. Thanks for letting I just me know. Make, I want to make sure you sound good. So, okay. Yeah, I wonder, I'll do the same thing so you're not alone. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I wonder if it's my headphones clicking against my, I'm going to put this in just to be safe. Oh, okay. Great. Because sometimes, you know, the, the women's yeah. jewelry thing. Yeah, so yeah. Let me, I think let you're me sounding better, works. though. You okay, good. Better. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, Shauna, what I really like about what you just said is you define what the bold move is. And I'm a big fan of lists and accountability. And so if it's just the one thing, and I do that one thing, at the end of the day, I can say, hey, I had a good day. I, I did that one thing. Did I get that right? That's exactly right. And what I love about that, Chester, is that you celebrated it at the end of the day, which is another fundamental part of this approach. Oh, that's great. So, okay, so we love this approach, but what if you don't feel like you're supported in the workplace? You know, there are bosses that are completely oblivious to the struggles we're having, right? How important is is it for a leader to communicate when they see somebody struggling without making them feel like they're failing? Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. There's a whole section in the book about how this can be applied for leaders And one of the things that I would say as a leader myself is we often are making very quick judgments based on what we saw in the hallway or now on a screen. So instead of making those judgments, it's better to get curious. It's better to ask questions, to let other people share with you how they're feeling, what they're experiencing, and what their challenges are, rather than defining them for them when we might be uh, missing half of the information. I like that. You know, now... As a couple of, you know, very manly men yeah, doing this podcast, I mean, you could probably tell. Um, for all of us men listening, you know, supporting women through unintentionally or designed biases is something that you, you've spoken about. I think this is really fascinating. Um, I, I was in a training recently, and it was an unconscious bias training, and a man raised his hand and said, we don't have any of that here. 
Uh, and and the, the the trainer said it's unconscious, you know. So 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 help us through this idea because you know we want to we want to help as as men, but sometimes you know we may be implying that the person can't handle a challenge. So how do we look for these sort of thought traps and provide proper support maybe to the women in our care if we are leaders or team members? I love that you're asking this. I do believe that this approach is equally applicable for women and men, and that women have had different barriers in the workplace. And it's important for us to recognize those, whether they're unconscious or conscious, that is, it is truth. So there's a difference between helping a team member do their work and helping a team member learn how to do their work. And in helping the team member uh, to learn different strategies, different approaches, we're not telling them that they have to do it a certain way. We're saying we're open to different pathways in order to do this. And we're giving credit that they may think differently than we do about this work. And um, this is true for men, women alike in the office, that we we have to figure out what the destination and journey is, but we don't have to do it exactly the same way. You know, it comes to experience, doesn't it? You know, you're, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a leader, you want to be that servant teacher. Uh, how do you, you know, we, we've always said, look, one of the great ways, I, I've got to pause here. Our cleaning lady is vacuuming outside my door. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I've well, got to we stop can't, I don't think we can hear it, though, so you may be okay. I don't know, Brent maybe Are, be able to tell us, but I, I can't hear it. I can't you hear can't it. You can't hear it? No. No, I think you're okay. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing because she's just, literally Just right mute. <laughs> After you tell the question, mute yourself. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. So, uh, Shauna, it, it that comes down to experience, right? You want to be that teacher. You want to be that servant leader. You want people to grow and, and develop. We've always loved leaders that were vulnerable and mm-hmm. could share their experience, right? Share their successes and share their failures. Talk us through how leaders can be uh, that good advisor when they steer people through a disaster, you know, when they can get their people to say, look, this was more of a learning experience rather than a total failure. That You know, you're vulnerable and yet you're getting the work done without crushing people along the way, right? Yes, I value that very much too. And I struggled with this vulnerability when I started as a leader. And particularly as a woman, I was expected to do it all right the first time, to have all the answers. The, 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 there was less grace when I was going to be able to make a mistake. And so I didn't know that what I was doing was putting up a barrier around me as a leader. And that in my effort to really protect and serve people, I was removing myself from sitting next to them at that table. And so what I think is important that you said here is that when we are vulnerable, when we say, I don't have this all figured out, what do you think we should do? What's missing from this plan? We're inviting people to sit at the table with us and we're making ourselves more relatable and also more enjoyable to work with as people. Yeah, I love that idea that we're, we're going into the dark together versus, yes. yeah, and I think that's a, that's a wonderful image here versus, you know, and I love this idea, yeah, that I don't have it all figured out. So how do you, how do you bring that out in people? How do you, you know, may be a little resistant. Again, we're talking people who may be a little anxious. How do you bring out those ideas when, you know, they may be afraid if I say something stupid, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fired. I'm going to be, you know, ostracized, et cetera. Right. So I think the first step is to say as a leader, I don't have all the answers and I'm inviting you to do this. And one of the strategies I talk about in the book is uh, asking the team what's missing. If I've just presented a new initiative or a new plan that we're going to work on together and I rolled it out and then I say to you, what's missing from this? I've already indicated to you that this is not done that we're co-creating this and this is your chance to weigh in. And it's a, it's creating psychological safety that someone is able to participate and it's giving them the opening that they might be otherwise too anxious to bring up on their own. Uh, that's great. Okay, so how how can people learn more about your work, Shauna? Well, I'd love to connect via my website, shaunaahawking.com and I'm also active on LinkedIn and Instagram, shaunaahawking.com, shaunaahawking there too. And you just talked about that idea of the catalyst. So something that's a huge catalyst to allow women and all underrepresented groups to succeed is when leaders create this environment that encourages people to support one another. We, you know, we call it creating a community, right? So how can leaders create this sort of environment 
because many times we, we kind of pit people against each other in the teams, right? It's we have a sales contest and it's, you know, me against Chester. Well, we're supposed to be working together against the world on the outside. So, so how do we create more of a community feel in these competitive cultures that we have? I think the first step is to celebrate wins as part of your everyday work culture. And not just wins where you, you know, close the deal, sign the contract. Wins can be about the progress that you made toward a project or that you started a conversation that could be important for the company later on and celebrate them in ways that resonate for the people that you are honoring. And then it's important to recognize and reward collaboration. I firmly believe that it's my job to be competitive with myself and who I was yesterday, not my peer. And if I'm reaching and exceeding all of my goals, but I'm cutting other people at the knees on the way, then I'm actually not reaching my goals at all. So as leaders to say, here's what collaboration looks like, and then to model that, and then I suggest building it into performance goals. Excellent. You know, we love celebration. I mean, we're the gratitude guys. So, you know, you, you do one bold thing, you celebrate, you know, you, you celebrate along the way. Um, it speaks to our, our, our very core. Um, you've talked about leadership through service, which I think is really, we, we love the idea of the servant leaders and obviously has become very popular in a lot of the readings about, you know, high performance leaders and high performance teams. But what are some of the traits of leaders who optimize their teams and their own potential through being that wonderful uh, servant leader. I, I love talking to the gratitude guys. We share this value <laughs> together. I think gratitude at work is one of the fundamental ways that we can bring out people's potential. Not just to say thank you, but to say, here's what you did well, and here's how it's impacting the company. Here's how you're supporting your colleagues, and to do this on a regular basis. Team members need to know their leaders believe in them. It doesn't mean that they're going to figure it all out on the first day, but when you say to someone, I believe in you, then your potential is just about ready to happen because you know that you have the space to learn, make mistakes, and grow, and that you'll have the continued support of your leader. You know, I want to jump in on that just a little bit, though. I mean, for people listening to the podcast, that sounds so scripted, you know, Shauna, I believe in you. (laughs) <laughs> check the box move on are there other ways to convey that that maybe don't seem so scripted you know what we run into particularly as the gratitude guys we say look you get need to make a presentation you need to talk about this and sometimes it comes across, comes across as very mechanical you know like they're reading from a sheet from hr this is how you celebrate this is how you present an award and it just came across to me and maybe it's just me that when I come up to say, I believe in you, I, like I get if you say it right and you've got a relationship that's meaningful. What if you don't? How do you say that maybe in a couple of other ways? Sure. Well, it does have to be authentic because if you're reading mm-hmm. someone else's script, the team member is going to know. So when you and I say that, the way we just said it to each other, I felt that, Chester. I could feel that you believed in me in that moment. And I want to believe that you could feel that I believed in you. And when we believe that, Um, then it comes out naturally. But that's not the case for everyone. So other ways to say, I believe in you, is to say, you know what, I'd love for you to step in and and staff this meeting today with the C-level team. You've been working on this presentation. I feel confident in your abilities to present on my behalf. And, And then let them go and have that learning experience and know that you trusted them and their expertise to be at that table. Or you could say, uh, I am really struggling with this aspect of the work, and I would like for you to take a stab at this part of the project. So you're putting them on that peer level with you. And by doing that, you are saying, I believe in your capacity to do this work. But you may not have said the words, I believe in you when you did that. Excellent. Thank you. How how does this fit with our personal lives, too? You know, you're writing not only for business people, you know, moms, you're writing for, um, you know, wives and husbands and and partners, et cetera. So how does this how does this impact our personal lives as well as our work lives? Well, I think we will always want people to support us in our personal lives as well as in our professional lives. And I say that nurturing your personal relationships is a bold move. You know, when we're so busy at work and we're feeling so overwhelmed, we often put ourselves last and then we think, oh, gosh, I just don't even have time to reach out to that person or spend time with my friends and family. And at the same time, we know that by and making those investments, we will show up better at work and in the world because we are being our whole selves. 
So these, um, that's why these bold moves don't have to be just at work and they don't have to be just at home because we are a whole person and they all relate to each other. So, so last so, question, what's your, what's your bold move for today? I you, was just going to ask oh, you the same, same question. question. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so great. That's We've great. known each other for a while, so yeah, it doesn't yeah. surprise me. Yeah. And you can't say the podcast, by the okay. way. You can't say the <laughs> bold move with the podcast. Okay, well, it is one of my bold moves for sure. I'm just so glad to be able to be here and talk about these topics that are important to all of us. But my next bold move is that I have a client meeting later today. We are talking about a really important new project that they're going to bring me on. It's never been done at the org before. And I want them to say yes to working with me because I believe in what we can accomplish together. Good luck. That's a bold move. Yeah, yeah. good luck. All right, last hey. question. Oh, sorry, unless you got something else, just I was going to ask a uh, uh, last no, question. I, okay, great. You're going to ask about personal uh, habits. Yeah, and yeah. So e- eager to hear what Sean yeah, has to we, say. Yeah, we really want to pick your brain. Okay, so you're you're very busy. There's lots of new book, got lots of clients, lots of balls up in the air. Walk us through your daily practices to keep your mental fitness where you want it to be. Well, I love first that you phrase this as a daily practice because I do believe that we have to work toward this every day, just like any muscle that we're exercising. So on that note, the very first thing that I do every morning is that I exercise, that my physical fitness contributes to my mental fitness, that I am better able to show up the way I want to because I've first invested in myself and reminded myself that I can accomplish something more than I probably thought I could at the start of that day. And um, I'm a big believer in gratitude. So when I'm thinking about each day, um, what was I really present for? What can I focus on to be grateful for? And sometimes I write it down in a little black notebook next to my bed. And sometimes I just take time to think about it before I go to bed, or I have the conversation with the family at the dinner table. But those two things are really the crux of how I'm able to uh, contribute to my own mental fitness each day. Oh, that's beautiful. Wonderful discussion, Shauna. Thank you so much for your time. We love to wrap up by saying, look, of all the things we talked about today, if you wanted people listening to walk away with two things, if they are only going to remember two things from the conversation, what would those two things be? Okay, so a bold move is something that challenges you to grow. And the very best time to start making bold moves is right here and right now. You know, she gives such beautifully succinct answers, doesn't she? I mean, it's like, exactly. It's like you've written a book and these <laughs> things are like in a book. You know what I'm saying? It's just uh, amazing. You're, you're wonderfully succinct. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for being on the show today, Shana. And uh, yeah, good luck with the book. And we're excited to see uh, where, this, uh, where this takes you and, and what will come next. Thank you. Yeah. I am grateful to both of you and excited to be able to have this conversation. So, Adrian, uh, Shauna couldn't have been more delightful and more succinct. I just love the way her answers are so well thought out and so easily delivered. I'm curious, though, what were your big takeaways from this one bold move a day? Yeah, you're right. She could have been on the the, the six o'clock news answering a question, you know, that that kind (laughs) of, yeah, four second little clip. That's great. Um, First off, you know, biases, um, you know, don't just help people do their work. Tell them how to do their work, right? I thought that was really good as we kind of, you know, if people want to take more bold moves, we tell them, oh, go do this presentation to to the senior leadership team. And they're kind of going, what? (laughs) Help them. I mean, it's going to take a little longer, but you're teaching them how to fish, right? Yeah. I really appreciate it that she said, look, uh, you define what the bold move is. You know, what's bold for me may not be bold for someone else. Like for, for you and I, a bold move would not be speaking to a large audience. We do that all the time. For other people, that's a huge bold move. So define what the bold move is. And then at the end of the day, celebrate that bold move. You know, give yourself a little credit. I, I really enjoyed that part of her, her conceptual you know, message. I also, you know, one of the ideas, she was, she was vulnerable herself saying, look, as a, when I first became a leader, I put up this barrier, you know, it's the in, infallible or, you know, you know, never wrong leader. And she says, that's, that's, that's wrong. So what we need to do instead to get people to, to be a little bit more bold is to say, look, I don't have all this figured out. I'm inviting you to, you know, to, to be a part of solutions. You want people to be a little bit more bold. And every organization we've ever gone into says, <laughs> I want my people to take more ownership. And, and yet they do everything they can to sometimes quash that. So she's saying, what a great little thing from as a leader saying, hey, here's a new idea. What's missing from this? Love that. Yeah, that was the question. You know, 
asking the right questions is just so key. You know, we, we talk about how do you get to know your people? Well, ask them their story. You know, where did you come from? How did you get here? Where do you want to go? Kind of thing. That question about what's missing, that was my biggest takeaway of the whole conversation. I don't have all the answers that we got. Is there anything missing? What's missing? I think that's such a great open door question that says, let's put our minds together and make what we think is already pretty good even a little better. And then her personal practices. What did you think of that? The things that she makes sure that she does. Well, I thought, you know, this was really good too, is, you know, is, is that idea of, you know, it's the daily practices, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and one of them was gratitude. And I'm kind of come back to how often I I was just doing a, uh, you know, some work with a client and, you know, they're so worried about having their salespeople compete with each other. And, and what her point was is, no, 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 we're competing with ourselves. And mm-hmm. how often do we do that, right? You're top 10. Great. Well, <laughs> well, who cares? What, what have you done versus what you did last year? You know, are you improving? Are you pushing yourself? Are you finding new ways to stretch and grow versus competing with everybody else? That's what gratitude should be around. So I thought that was really important, you know, not only being grateful every day to herself, but also, you know, teaching leaders a little bit more of what gratitude means and who we should be competing really with. Yeah, I also appreciate it. And we've heard this many times. People will say, look, for my mental health, I need to exercise. I need to get out and go for a walk. I need to, you know, get in motion. Um, I had a wonderful coaching session today, a leader that's going through a lot of transition, you know, moving homes and studios and businesses and people and got off track. And how important it is to, to, to do that reboot, you know, that reset. Forgive yourself because you haven't been doing it for a week or two or however long and just say, hey, today my bold move is going to be to get back on track and take care of my mental health. And uh, with you, it's a daily discipline. You know, you just kind of set your mind, I'm going to do it. Now, if you don't do it today, tomorrow, forgive yourself. <laughs> you know, as our friend Marshall Goldson says, let it go. You can't change it. Reboot. Have your bold move for today. Get back on track and uh, and create a better life for you for yourself today. Well, those were my takeaways. Did I miss anything? What's no, missing, Adrian? That is great. No, no, yeah. What's missing? I love that. Yeah. Well, we want to thank uh, Shauna for being on today. We want to thank our producer Brent Klein and to Christy Lawrence who helps us find amazing guests. And all, of course, all of you listened in. Now, if you like this podcast, we have a special offer for you to go to thecultureworks.com. That's where Chester and I, you can find everything about us, but there's also some wonderful free resources. You can download a chapter of our books, and and so there's some wonderful things there. Download a chapter of Anxiety at Work, and wink, wink, there may be a secret Easter egg in there. So I'm not going to tell you anymore. You have to actually (laughs) read that chapter if you haven't already. So so thanks again for joining us today. Yeah, as Homer Simpson would say, ooh, Easter egg. Ah." (laughs) And by the way, we've got a wonderful community online, uh, thecultureworks.ai, where we're creating a safe place to talk about anxiety and stress in the workplace. And without question, we love speaking to audiences all around the world, whether it's in person or virtually. If you're looking for a great topic to be discussed, whether it's wellness, resilience, anxiety at work, please give us a call. We'd love to speak at your event. Well, we hope this has been helpful for you. Share it with your friends and family, and we really hope you have a great, healthy, and happy day today. 